Female friendships are one of the most beautiful things you can ever experience as a girl. And there is an art to making female friends. And I know a lot of us are traumatized, sadly, from really bad experiences with other girls. And this is how you're going to get over it and make new friends, but also maintain friends. Because maintaining friends is harder than making friends sometimes. I think we all have some type of friendship trauma, whether it be from school or some type of trauma is usually what most people have, at least with like a friend, have some type of drama, being stabbed in the back, having lies spread about you, especially as a girl, that is the patriarchy is doing. <laughs> we are so over that. This is how I make new friends. I've had a lot of bad friendships and I have a lot of good friendships. Everyone that walks into your life has a purpose. You don't have, you don't have to know what that purpose is, but just know that everyone has a purpose for the bigger picture. And sometime, someday you will see it. Maybe not right now, but you will know in the future. I have a lot of bad friendships and I have a lot of good friendships. I've had a lot of bad friendships. Ended. Only good relationships now. All relationships teach you something. Whether that's teaching you about yourself, teaching you about the world, teaching you about the other person. But sometimes it just isn't meant to be. And that's okay. Accept it, heal the trauma, and move on. Before entering a new friendship, it's vital to ask yourself what are your green flags and what are your red flags because if you have no idea it's going to be very 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 hard for you to build a relationship and build or even know how you want or expect another person to be in a relationship the red flags vary from person to person of course but i have some that i feel like are very general having no boundaries and having no respect for other people's time that can be being late without communicating it beforehand breaking boundaries basically if i communicate i'm not comfortable with this and that person still chooses to do it that's a red flag jealousy and insecurity is a very common one the problem isn't being insecure the problem is when a person is insecure and projects this onto you because then you suffer and you don't want to suffer <laughs> believe me jealousy there's nothing wrong with being jealous either but again if the feeling of jealousy or insecurity takes over you as a person it can be very very hard and extremely toxic to have a relationship with that person and how do you know because i've been one of those people but i've also had friends who are like those people so just don't be friends with those kind of people you will save time in the long run and you save yourself from a lot of friendship trauma the person who always talk shit about other people or just talking about other people in general. Personally for me, I feel like that is a very strange thing to do. Because I'm not interested in what other people are doing, I'm interested in what you are doing. What are your thoughts? What are your hobbies? So that goes hand with being judgmental. Always constantly observing and judging other people is a red flag. And talking shit and being judgmental No. no, 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 you can't be friends with that kind of person. I mean, you can, but you will probably get traumatized unless you turn into that same person because you become the people who you surround yourself with. A person who is judgmental and talks shit about her friends is going to be the exact same way to her other friends. So if she's talking shit about her friends, She's definitely going to talk about you. 
you can trust her. And that is a very sad reality, but it's reality. And I think people need to look out for that if they want to create a secure relationship with someone. Boy crazy one, Cassie from Euphoria. Having any type of friend who seeks validation from other people, especially men, is extremely dangerous. Because there's no loyalty, there's no value in that friendship from her side. Because she will always drop you for a male partner or any type of male validation. And decentering men is a very important part of a lot of women's life. I feel that we all can benefit from decentering men. And I don't mean not interacting with men. I mean, stop thinking about all of these small things, everyday things like how you carry yourself, how you dress, how your hair looks, how your makeup looks, how you talk, because it's all ingrained into our brain from society. Beliefs that are put onto you is very crucial because do you know who you are? without those, and you might even know that you're doing it, because it's all subconscious. That it can be, for example, calling other girls the C word, <laughs> or calling them a bitch, or anything like that. Because those terms were made by men to degrade women, and I will never use those terms. I think it's disgusting. Sidetrack. <laughs> Not befriend the boy crazy girl. And if you want proof of that, just watch Euphoria. Or not, because we don't support Sam Leventon or whatever his name is, because he's fucking weird. This is such a sidetrack. The green flags are being respectful towards other people. I think that's a very basic one to have, that people have respect for everyone. This does not mean being a people pleaser in any type of way, I just mean being respectful in general, especially towards service people, because I work a service and if you are mean to me, you are the biggest red flag, I swear. Being communicative is literally a deal breaker for me. If you're not communicating with me, what are you doing? You cannot expect someone to know what you're thinking if you don't choose to communicate it. So please start communicating. And I say this to myself because I'm looking at myself and you need to communicate because how will people know what you're thinking? It's literally impossible. And I know it's scary to communicate, but you have to because otherwise it makes it extremely hard to make a friendship. Matching each other's morals and values. This is very important to me. Personally, I feel like this depends from person to person. But if your morals are here and the other person is here and you're both a very strong-willed people, but you're pulling to this side and this uh, person is pulling to this side and you can't meet in the middle ground and you're just barking at each other, that is doomed friendship. And I can say that because I had one of those friends and I could not be friends with the person because her morals and values were so far apart from my own. And that basically ended the friendship, which is very sad. But, you know, that happens. It wasn't meant to be. Being vulnerable with other people, having that openness and putting yourself out there. It's so important because otherwise you're just a brick wall for people. It's very hard to sustain and maintain a relationship that's a very surface level. If you want a type of relationship, that is a different story. There are different kind of, kinds of friendships, but um, creating a deep friendship that connects people, it is impossible not to be 
vulnerable with each other. And having someone make the effort for you and having them make... If only one of you is making effort, the relationship is going to fall off. Because that person is going to be so tired of constantly trying to maintain that connection. So put in the effort. There are questions you need to ask yourself before even going into a friendship. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. What is the purpose of the friendship? Even before starting a friendship, what is the purpose? Are you doing it for your own benefit? Are you doing it to use this person? If you do that, you're a fucking red flag and I am calling you out right now. Stop. That's not okay. But if you're the purpose of the friendship is to make a genuine connection and I feel like that should be the approach when you want to make friends a genuine connection and really trying to connect with another person what do you expect from the friendship? do you expect this person to be there for you 24 7? do you expect to travel? do you expect to make new hobbies together? what are your expectations? how do you want them to show up for you? and how would you show up for them? That means in good times and bad times. Because let's be honest, having major lifestyles, having success, having fulfilling achievements, when you achieve all of those things, how do you want the other person to react? Most of us like them to react in a positive way, being very supportive and happy without jealousy. That's like a basic thing to do. But most important, how do you want them to show up if you're in a bad place? When you're feeling down, when you can't get out of the rut, when you're going through something, how do you want them to be there for you? Are your expectations for them to be supportive? Or do you just want to be quiet? I don't know. But you need to figure those out. And most important, how do you want to feel? Do you want to feel uplifted? Do you want to feel like you're really floating off the clouds because you're so happy and so filled with gratitude? I expect most people, my assumption is that most people want to feel that way. You don't want to feel judged. You don't want to feel small in your friendship. You want to uplift each other. But ask yourself, how do you want to feel? And also ask yourself, how do you want the other person to feel in that relationship? Be careful with this because this can lead to people pleasing and we're not about that. How do you make friends? You need to do you in your work. Honestly. And I know we put it off a lot of times, but you need to do your inner work in order for a friendship to be sustainable. At least going into a friendship, not be having toxic behaviors and dragging the other person down. And that might not even happen consciously. That might happen unconsciously just because we have a lot of trauma. <laughs> you and me. No, but people have a lot of trauma and you need to heal that. Do your inner work. Know your strengths and know your weaknesses. If I know, let's get real for a sec. I know that I yap a lot. That's why I have a YouTube channel. I know that I can be very intense, as you see in this video. I know that I can be very, very emotional. I know all of these things. But knowing these things and being aware, I can check myself. And knowing all of the good things, I also, which is good things. Being loyal and etc. We don't have to get into how great I am. How do you act in a conflict? There doesn't have to be conflict, and conflict isn't necessarily a bad thing, but knowing how you act. What is your natural reaction? Is it to shut down? Is it to go into attack mode? Is it being a victim? You need to figure it out. If you don't have an idea of how you act in conflict or trying to resolve a conflict, that can make it very hard for you if conflict 
appears. Knowing yourself, how do you communicate and how do you approach conflict? It's very important. Stop self-sabotaging. This can be either... Self-sabotaging can show up in multiple different ways. It can be choosing to play small in friendship. It can be choosing to leave before that person leaves. It can be a lot of these different things. And again, back to healing yourself. We constantly need to heal ourselves in order to move on. Heal, feel, act, move on. Putting yourself out there. There's no such thing as rejection. Only redirection. Everyone walking into your life has a purpose. Everyone living your life has a purpose. And again, you have no idea what the purpose is. But for the bigger picture, and maybe a year from now, or maybe a month from now, you will know what the purpose was. And you constantly learn as you go. I mean, it doesn't hurt when someone is leaving you. It doesn't mean you can't be happy or sad. It just means accepting, healing, and moving on. Being open. And not only being open to creating these new friendships, but also being open to the universe, being open to divine timing and feeling that you're in a state of flow because that's when people come into your life. And honestly, those are the best friends I ever made. The people who just came into my life when I wasn't trying because I was in a high vibration. And you will see if you live in a high vibration and you have a positive mindset, not toxic positivity, but have a positive mindset, you will glow. That is the biggest glow up you will ever see. And I'm not talking only physically, I'm talking mentally, I'm talking spiritually. You will feel almost like a high. And that's making you magnetic. Rewiring your limiting beliefs in friendships, but also in life. Oh, I can't make friends because I'm uh, weird, or I can't make friends because X, Y, and Z. No, listen to me. You're the most beautiful person you can be. Your purpose on this earth is to exist. You're perfect just the way you are. And there's no purpose in finding a purpose. What was I talking about? Feeling open, seeking fulfillment within yourself. But where do we find those friends? The internet. It's very funny because my mom taught me, well, you can't trust people on the internet. A lot of my greatest friends are online. And that's the beautiful thing about media. The way we connect with each other and especially TikTok, YouTube, not Instagram, but TikTok and YouTube, a lot of people see you and, you know, reach out if you want to reach out. Oftentimes, that is the greatest thing you'll ever hear. I love when people reach out to me and it makes me so happy because it makes me feel safe and it lets me know that that person feels safe. It also makes me very happy because I see that person is trying to reach out and that is, oh, it just makes us all happy. <laughs> but other than that, my friends, friends, people within your social circle, your friends, friend, that can be risky. Obviously, you need to make sure you have your red flags and green flags down and also, you know, not being a backstab person and taking that person away from your friend but being friends with the person in a respectful way you know work this is very unpopular i know i saw a lot of tiktoks where people are like you cannot be friends with the co-workers and that is true i've experienced a lot of bad co-workers but I've also experienced a lot of good co-workers and I love them. 
and they're so funny they're so smart they're so genuine and they just make me so happy and we really click with each other back to internet sliding into the dm you know having the courage to take the first step is so important a lot easier to make friends than maintain friends because how do we how do you maintain a relationship trust each other we're being open we're being communicative all of these different pillars when they come together that makes a good friendship and it makes the friendship work hold on hey. oh. whenever there's a conflict seeking to resolve the conflict it is not you against the other person it's you two against the problem seeking a middle ground and seeking understanding may be compromising sometimes if that is what it takes to maintain a relationship sometimes it is but sometimes you also have to ask yourself is it worth compromising for this sometimes it is sometimes maybe not but just being open to communicate communicate and compromising and speaking your mind tell the person when there's something wrong because that other person has no business trying to figure out what's your problem you need to tell them making the effort again this comes with respect this comes with trust and trust is built over time making the effort to see each other i have a lot of friends we haven't seen each other that often we see each other maybe like we see each other maybe once every three months i have very low maintenance friendships but i have very very strong friendships and that works for me but if you have a person who is high maintenance that needs to be talking to you every day and you're low maintenance maybe that doesn't work out but you'll see as a girl female friendships are the most wonderful fulfilling experience as ever and i really hope that you make new friends have fun and heal your trauma i know we put it off a lot of times but heal your trauma you can do it i'm so sorry what you went through you'll thank yourself in the long run